The Faroe Islands are a small archipelago in the North Sea, about 200 miles from Scotland, home to about 52,000 people. Since 1388, the islands have been a part of the Kingdom of Denmark, and remain a part of Denmark to this day, with a high degree of autonomy. As such, the islands run their own affairs with their own taxes and elections, separate from the central Danish government in Copenhagen, though they are still subject to the Danish constitution and have the Queen of Denmark as their head of state. Greenland, also part of the Kingdom of Denmark, has an identical status of autonomy to the Faroes. A central part of Faroes' politics and their autonomy within what is known as the realm of Denmark is their local government, the Lukting, the Parliament of the Faroe Islands that was established in its current form in 1852, but has its origins dating back to Old Norse times, in Viking times, when the islands were first settled in the 9th century. The Lukting hold elections every four years, with local Faroese political parties running for seats, though some parties, such as the Equality Party, have informal links to parties in mainland Denmark. Additionally, these local parties run in the Danish national elections, in the Danish national parliament, the Volketing, as the Faroe Islands and uh, Greenland are each guaranteed two seats in this parliament. The most important single main issue that has dominated Faroe's politics since the late 19th century is that of the idea of Faroe's independence from the Kingdom of Denmark. Each political party has a stance on the status of the Faroe Islands, with the major parties in the Lukting supporting either complete independence of the Faroe Islands as a prospective new sovereign state, or a continuation of the Union within the Danish realm, with a few political parties positioning their stance by advocating more regional autonomy. Well, to many the idea that the tiny Faroe Islands with its isolated location and small population, obtaining national sovereignty may seem like an odd sticking point in Ireland's national debate. However, the struggle for Faroese linguistic, political, and cultural recognition from Copenhagen is a significant part of Faroese history. The Faroese people speak their own language of Ferdistmal, which is mostly unintelligible to Danish. The other Scandinavian languages of Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish have a very high degree of mutual intelligibility because of their shared linguistic history, whereas the languages of the Faroes, as well as Iceland, developed their own insular languages due to their island's isolation from the rest of European Scandinavia. This has allowed both languages to preserve many aspects of the Old Norse language. So Faroese can be thought of as a mix of Icelandic and Norwegian, whilst simultaneously being its own hardly understood separate language. Despite the Faroese language being spoken by almost every person on the islands, for most of the island's history, the local language has been suppressed and discouraged in favour of Danish. Since the Faroe Islands became a part of the Danish Kingdom in 1388, Danish was the sole language of the administration and of education until reforms in the early 20th century. Only Danish was taught in schools, and the Faroese language was forbidden from being taught at all, and from being used in churches, which was a central part of Faroese culture. Additionally, the unpopular and repressive political policies by the Danish government was a further catalyst for the development of Faroese nationalism. In 1816, the Lukting was abolished by the Danish government and was replaced by a Danish judiciary, removing any direct representation of the Faroese people. It was only until 1852 when the island reformists demanded that the Lukting be reinstated that the Lukting was actually restored. It was from this movement of Faroese reformist thinkers that the Faroese nationalist movement took shape. Despite the maintained supremacy of Danish as the sole administrative language, 
the Faroese language survived in the local population and was maintained in strong folklore and traditional singing and oral history. As such, promoting and preserving the Faroese language became the primary campaigning point of the budding nationalist movement in the late 19th and early 20th century. During this time, the conflict between the promotion of the Faroese language in opposition to the promotion of Danish caused two camps to emerge in Faroese politics. At the start of the 20th century, these organised into the pro-Faroese language Scholstur, which means the self-government party that advocated for more autonomy for the Faroes, and the pro-Danish language Sampant, the unionist party that advocated for preserving the close relations of the close close relation of the Faroes to the Danish kingdom. These two parties stood for election and sat in Lukting after 1906, and despite the stronghold the Sampant had in the Lukting elections throughout the early 20th century, the Scholster slowly gained popularity after the First World War. This is due in part because of the success of Iceland's own independence from Denmark. Now, Iceland, like the Faroe Islands, was a part of the Danish kingdom and had its own similar struggle for the recognition of its own language and political rights. And in 1918, Iceland was granted independence, but retained the Danish king as their monarch and remained a dominion of Denmark. Iceland would uh, continue to have a significant influence on Faroese politics and helped encourage the idea that the Faroe Islands too uh, could not only just promote and preserve their native language, but also potentially achieve independence. The Scholster party grew in success in the elections in the interwar period, um, and so various reforms were made that finally gave allowance and official use of the Faroese language. Also, the use of Furistmal was legalised in schools and in churches in 1938 and 1939, respectively. These important reforms in favour of the recognition of Furistmal were actually helped to be made with the help of another pro-union party that was new to Faroese politics, uh, the Equality Party, or the Social Democratic Party, Social Democrat Party, which was established in the Faroese Islands in 1925, and was a sister party to Denmark's own Social Democratic Party that has always been Denmark's most dominant party, both back then and also very much so today. Whilst this caused a uh, new split in the uh, unionist vote, a pro-independence party split uh, in 1939 from the Scholster party that had a more definitive campaign for the outright independence of the Faroe Islands. Uh, this became known as the Faroese People's Party. However, it was the events of the Second World War that would have the most effect on the debate of Faroese self-determination. The German army rolled across the neutral borders of Little Denmark, and in a matter of hours it occupied the entire country. By nightfall, Denmark is erased as a nation, and the Danes go into slavery. When Denmark was occupied by Nazi Germany, in 1940, the United Kingdom occupied the Faroe Islands to make sure that the islands did not fall under German control. As the British soldiers stationed on the Faroes were merely preventing German action to take over the island, the eternal affairs um, of the Faroes were agreed to be left to the Lukting. This meant that the Faroese people were governing themselves, independent from Copenhagen, for the first time in their history. As such, actions were taken that advanced the Faroe Islands' uh, independence from Copenhagen, oftentimes out of necessity of um, the Second World War. For example, up until 1940, the Faroe Islands had 
only use the Danish national uh, Danibro flag, uh, but to avoid confusion with the German-occupied Denmark and to protect Faroese fishing vessels from German submarine attacks, the flag of the Faroe Islands, the Merkith, was given official status as the island's flag to be flown at sea instead of the Danibro. The policies of self-determination and political independence from Denmark continued when the People's Party won the most seats in the Lukting elections of 1943, with over 40% of the vote. And in 1944, uh, Furistmal was given full equality in all legal proceedings. In the same year, Iceland declared itself as an independent republic from Denmark, and there was much hope that the Faroe Islands would also follow suit. Above all, the autonomous governance under British occupation proved that the islands were able to govern themselves. After the war was over, the British left and the islands were returned to the Danish authorities. However, the independence movement, not wanting to return to Danish sovereignty, organised an independence referendum in 1946 to decisively decide the status of the Faroe Islands. Full independent sovereignty for the Faroe Islands won the vote by only 161 vote majority, resulting in 51% in favour of independence and 49 in favour of a continued union with Denmark. However, the Danish government ruled that the referendum was unconstitutional and refused to recognise the results. As such, the Danish government dissolved the Lukting and forced another election the same year. However, the People's Party still held the polarity of the votes at 40% at the new elections, despite a slight drop in support. However, despite this, the continued support for the Faroese independence movement led to renewed negotiations between Copenhagen and the Lukting, which culminated in the 1948 Act of Faroese Home Rule Agreement, which saw the Faroe Islands given local autonomy to govern themselves, with the Lukting given the authority to legislate for the Faroe Islands on their own matters, whilst the archipelago would continue to be ruled by Denmark. The Faroese language was also adopted to be the official language of the islands, and the Merkith was recognised as the official flag. In the same year, as a result of the post-war events, a new party called the Republican Party was formed. Whereas separatist politics in the Faroes during the war years was dominated by the People Party's uh, right-wing stance, the Republican Party was a socialist left-wing party, that also advocated strictly for independence. By their second contested election in 1954, they were the second largest party with nearly one quarter of the votes, superseding the People's Party. An important development for the islands was when Denmark joined the European Communities, which later became a part of the European Union in 1973. The Faroe Islands decided not to join the European Union thereafter, as they did not want their main economy or fishing to be threatened. This has led to Euroscepticism being a significant theme in Faroese politics, especially within the independence movement. All of the aforementioned political parties still stand for election and debate in the Lukting about issues pertaining to the Faroe Islands, particularly matters of autonomy. The four main positions that dominate Ferrari's politics of unionism, independence, left-wing, right-wing, as well as neutral positions are all represented in Ferrari's politics. The main political parties that represent Ferrari's people are as follows. The Republican Party, now just simply called Republic, is left-wing and pro-independence. Their policy is democratic socialist, advocating for more state involvement in the economy, uh, environmentalist initiatives, and a Faroese Republic outside of the European Union. The People's Party, full name being Faroese People's Party Radical Self-Government, is centre-right and also advocates for independence. Unlike uh, the Republic Party, the People's Party has a moderate conservative outlook on both social and economic policy 
primarily advocating for lower taxes and greater autonomy. The Equality Party, which is linked to the Danish Social Democrat Party, is centre-left and generally holds a pro-union stance, but has also advocated for increased autonomy in the past. Like their Danish counterparts, they are Social Democrats, advocating for a robust social welfare net to protect islanders in case of uh, economic instability, which has affected the islands from time to time. The Unionist Party, or Sampunt Party, is centre-right and strongly advocates for the continued unity with Denmark. They see the union between Denmark and the Faroe Islands as a beneficial relationship that is best for the Faroese economy. As such, they follow a policy of low-tax economic liberalism that supports the island's traditional farming and fishing industries, whilst also advocating for greater trade links with Denmark. The self-government Scholster Party holds a centrist, socially liberal position and still retains a pro-autonomy policy, though less radical than the People's Party and Republic. This means that they support gradually gaining more political and economic autonomy for the Faroe Islands, until the islands are truly ready to become an independent sovereign state. However, after the Second World War, the Scholstor party seldom obtained more than two seats in the Lukting. The newest party was founded in 1992 and is called the Centre Party, and despite its name, is actually a right-wing Christian conservative party. They've maintained usually two seats in the Lukting, their policy focuses on social issues concerning abortion and their opposition to same-sex marriage. Most parties have maintained around seven seats in the Lukteng, and there is only slight fluctuation in popular support for the major parties. However, throughout the course of the second half of the 20th century through to the present day, Circumstances have seen the pendulum of politics swing very slightly from one camp to another, and often requiring multiple parties across the political spectrum to form coalition governments. After an economic crisis in the early 1990s that was caused by overfishing and government overspending, the Faroe Islands had to rely on loans from the Danish government. The high interest rates on these loans have strongly affected the Faroe Islands economy, and to this day, uh, Danish financial support makes up one-tenth of the Faroe Islands income, though today this reliance is steadily declining. During the turn of the new millennium, the economy recovered to the level that it enjoyed before the crisis, and the prospect of independence was once again considered. In 2001, a second independence referendum was planned to take place under a Republic and People's Party coalition government. However, the plans were rescinded when the Danish government threatened to cut off financial support to the islands. Hugner Hoydal, the leader of the Republic Party, summarised the current situation of the Faroese independence movement as... It's currently only the money that actually connects us to Denmark. All Faroese people agree that we should have our own schools and own language. The cultural battle is over. It's the Danish money that is the obstacle to independence. However, the recent prospects of oil extraction by the Norwegian company Statoil in the waters around the Faroes have renewed hopes that the extraction and export of petroleum would enable the Faroes to support itself financially and be able to realistically obtain sovereignty. Hoydal continues by saying, There's no doubt that the economic argument against independence ceases to apply if Statoil discovers oil. With or without oil, the Ferries independence movement still constantly strives for further self-determination. Whether they'll be successful in forming the little pharaohs into a self-sufficient group of sheep farmers and fishermen with their own island nation, or if they will choose to enjoy their budding prosperity with Denmark, will remain to be seen.